August 4th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 1 and 2 from the Old Testament. There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was pure and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. Seven sons and three daughters were born to him. His possessions included 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. In addition, he had a very great household. Thus he was the greatest of all the people in the east. Now his sons used to go and hold a feast in the house of each one in turn, and they would send and invite their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. When the days of their feasting were finished, Job would send for them and sanctify them. He would get up early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job thought, Perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's customary practice. Now the day came when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also arrived among them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? And Satan answered the Lord, from roving about on the earth and from walking back and forth across it? So the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth, a pure and upright man, one who fears God and turns away from evil. Then Satan answered the Lord, Is it for nothing that Job fears God? Have you not made a hedge around him and his household and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and his livestock have increased in the land. But extend your hand and strike everything he has, and he will no doubt curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, All right then, everything he has is in your power, only do not extend your hand against the man himself. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now the day came when Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and a messenger came to Job, saying the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing beside them, and the Sabaeans swooped down and carried them all away, and they killed the servants with the sword, and I, only I alone, escaped to tell you. While this one was still speaking, another messenger arrived and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burnt up the sheep and the servants. It has consumed them. And I, only I alone, escaped to tell you. While this one was still speaking, another messenger arrived and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands and made a raid on the camels and carried them all away. And they killed the servants with the sword. And I, only I alone, escaped to tell you. While this one was still speaking, another messenger arrived and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind swept across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people and they died, and I, only I alone, escaped to tell you. Then Job got up and tore his robe. He shaved his head and then he threw himself down with his face to the ground. He said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will return there. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. May the name of the Lord be blessed. In all this, Job did not sin, nor did he charge God with moral impropriety. Again the day came when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also arrived among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, Where do you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roving about on the earth and from walking back and forth across it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? For there is no one like him on the earth, a pure and upright man, one who fears God and turns away from evil, and he still holds firmly to his integrity, so that you stirred me up to destroy him without reason. But Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin, indeed a man will give up all that he has to save his life. But extend your hand and strike his bone and his flesh, and he will no doubt curse you to your face. So the Lord said to Satan, All right, he is in your power, only preserve his life. 
So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord, and he afflicted Job with a malignant ulcer from the sole of his feet to the top of his head. Job took a shard of broken pottery to scrape himself with while he was sitting among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Are you still holding firmly to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he replied, You're talking like one of the godless women would do. Should we receive what is good from God and not also receive what is evil? In all this, Job did not sin by what he said. When Job's three friends heard about all this calamity that had happened to him, each of them came from his own country. Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bildad, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Naamathite. They met together to come to show sympathy for him and to console him. But when they gazed intently from a distance but did not recognize him, they began to weep loudly. Each of them tore his robes and they threw dust into the air over their heads. Then they sat down with him on the ground for seven days and seven nights. Yet no one spoke a word to him, for they saw that his pain was very great. God, we do know some things about Job. First and foremost, we know that he was real. He was a real man. This is a real story. Uh, because Ezekiel, a uh, prophet, refers to him. He refers to him and Daniel and Noah. So we know that Job existed. We know that, that Job was well-to-do. He had quite a bit of livestock and property and a big family. We know that he had three friends that cared very much for him because they came from great distances to see him. We do know that he, his faith was probably stronger than his wife's based upon her response. And another thing we, we know, God, is a lot of times we flippantly use this particular book in the Bible to describe our own lives. Yet, if we take the time to read Job again, oh my goodness, our lives aren't anywhere close to what Job had to go through. But the idea is the same, and I believe that that's why you made sure that this book was included in the Bible, so that we could start to understand when we question things happening, are we questioning the right way, and are we praising you and glorifying you in the right way as we go through those troubles. Now I find it absolutely consistent with your character in our relationship that as I'm going through a very hard time in my life that it started the same day that I began to record Job. I'm struggling with my will versus your will versus my obedience and your response. <laughs> and I've been begging you in prayer to explain, to show, to teach, to allow me to understand even a little bit of what's happening to me because I'm really lost. That's the best word I can use for it. I am really lost. I am baffled that in obedience, things aren't going right. Granted, people around me aren't dying yet. <laughs> Thank goodness. But things just aren't going the way they should. If, if somebody is going to be obedient to you, then shouldn't things go right in their life? You know me, I say that a little bit facetiously, but you know you and I have been work, trying to work this out. Well, I've been trying to work this out in prayer with you. And lo and behold, as I'm going through this today and I look to see what we're recording today, it's Job. And I kind of feel like Job in the sense of that first time around that Satan took, took a lot of things away from him. That something was coming from this side and something was coming from this side and something was coming from above him. And, and it must have just felt like this swirling around of all of these things. You can even hear it as we're reading that this messenger came in and he wasn't even finished. Another messenger came in. Another messenger came in. And although it's not the, as big a deal as what Job's going through in this story, I do know that 
I can speak personally, my life feels that way sometimes. That just like Job, I, I can't even catch my breath. And yet Job did. And his response was to worship you. All of his children, who he loved very much, he even sacrificed animals for them. All of his children are killed instantly in this swirl of everything else going on. And even though he is heartbroken, he still sends up his worship to you. And next we see Satan going, yeah, well, of course he'll save his own life because what harm is it that his livestock's gone and, and his kids are gone? Honestly, if you did something bad to him personally, I'm sure he would curse you, God. And so Job himself ends up physically cursed with an ulcer and in great pain. In the midst of all of this, while he's trying to deal with things, his wife comes to him and says, why don't you just curse God and die already? So <laughs> here's Job. His entire life is swirling around him in this tornado of drama. Everything's being taken away from him right in front of his own eyes. He's in incredible pain. And the one person who he possibly loved and trusted tells him to just die already. Curse God and die. On top of it, Job has to come up with enough strength to teach his wife that what she's saying is not right. <laughs> and so he mildly disciplines her through his statement. So... I know I'm not Job <laughs> because here what I'm going through is nothing like what Job went through and I am having a hard time with it God I'm trying to praise you and worship you but it is not working because I am so caught up in the fact of what's happened to my life what's happened to my world I also know I'm not Job because in the middle of it I'm not thinking of other people I'm not trying to help my wife understand that what she's saying is wrong or my husband. A and we go on to see Job even do that with his, his three friends that have come from far away to comfort him. He ends, up, he ends up comforting them and teaching them. So God, I know another thing about this story. I know I am not Job. <laughs> oh, but I want to be. I would even go so far as to say I would be willing to go through everything Job went through if I could have faith like his. If I could have all of these things happen to me and my first response is to still worship you and still be really clear that God gives things and he can take things away and that is totally fine because he's God. I would give up everything I had if I could have faith like that. And I try really hard every day to have faith like that. But I don't come anywhere close to Job. So I thank you for your timing of having me record Job. When today I'm struggling over a swirling situation in my life. One that has so many facets to it that I'm having to deal with it on multiple levels. And yet you send into my life a story of a man who has it way worse than me. But who is praising you in that storm. Who is defending you to his wife and eventually to his three friends. I thank you for so clearly showing me where my priorities are wrong. What I'm going through is nothing because it is your choice that I go through it. Job didn't have that luxury. He didn't know what was going on. But I know that what is going on is your choice for my life. 
I also know that the path I walk in this life is your choice as well. That the sovereignty of, of all of your love for us and wanting what's always best for us may be situations that we find horrible to go through. That when you seem really, really far away and not answering us, it is actually for your glory because it becomes part of our testimony. It becomes part of our story that we tell other people about you. That for such a long time, we, we couldn't fill you. And yet you were always there and you were always working. And you helped teach us what faith was. When we couldn't fill and see you day in and day out. God, I'm not Job. And for that, I'm very sorry. But I am willing to learn. Like I begged you this afternoon, just teach me. Just show me what I need. I will be obedient. I will learn. I want to glorify you. I want you to have full control of my life and I want to praise you no matter what happens in my life. If everything gets taken away, I want to praise you. If everything is given to me, I want to praise you in that same feeling from that same place in my heart. God, my life needs to be all about you. It needs to quit being about me. I can only do that with your strength. I can't do it on my own. I have tried for too many years to run my life. And amazingly, it's never worked. So I need you. I need you more than ever. Because I've got to get this right. I've got to make sure that my life and my actions always reflect how amazing you are. I know in my weakness, you shine. But right now I feel weak in the sense that I am not reflecting you. And God, I know this healing process is going to take a while. But I'm not so much worried about the healing process as I am the learning process. And getting my heart set right that it will always worship you. Even on days like today. And even on days like today, you send in huge blessings into my life. Like recording and studying the book of Job. Thank you for being my sovereign God. Thank you for all the things that you've taken away from me. Out of love. That I either need them gone because they're becoming idols in my life. And I'm not as focused on you. Or there's something that's not good for me. And you choose to take those things out of my life to give me something better. God, whatever's happened in this situation, I thank you. I thank you for loving me enough. That you always want what is best for me. Even when to my simple heart, it feels like the worst thing in the world. God, I can't thank you enough for taking such good care of me. I can't thank you enough for showing me what true love really is. I can't thank you enough for loving me when my faith is this weak. Tomorrow is another day and I pray for strength and I pray for wisdom and I pray that you teach me everything I need to know. 
to be wise like Job and to understand exactly who you are. You are Lord God over everything and you reign supreme. In your son's name I pray, amen.